Okay, just for practice, we're just going to do another um, integrating factor type thing. And so here's our differential equation. This time, the only difference between uh, normally is I got an initial value problem now. So what we're going to do is we're going to solve for c in the end. And just like normal, um, I'm looking for this form right here. And it doesn't really look like I have that. See, the, the, the function of x would just be 1 and my y is on the right hand side. Okay, so I'm just, all, I'm, all I really have to do is just subtract it and then I've got q of x would be, yeah, q of x would be my uh, 2 of x, e to the 2x. Okay, so um, let's just go ahead and do that. All right, great. So let's, let's, um, so we did determine that you know, just based on, you know, just a regular form and everything, that our, our uh, p of x, um, you know, that, that part is just going to be negative 1. And, you know, here's our q of x right here. So let's just go and get our integrating factor, okay? And remember the integrating factor is a function of x. And it's just e raised to the integral of p of x, which is just negative 1 with respect to x. Okay, and that's just e to the, well, this is, yeah, that's just e to the negative x. See, if I, I take the integral of negative 1, I get, you know, negative x. So, um, yeah, so let's just take a e to the negative x and multiply it uh, through. And see what we get. Let me see if I can get a better, eh, this pen's somewhat sharp. If, um, if I don't use fine point pens, um, you know, it starts to get hard to read, so I try to keep Okay, so all I did right here is I just multiplied every each term of the differential equation by my integrating factor which was e raised to the integral of p of x so there we go and I think right away I can uh, pretty much hammer down on this thing um, if I call this a function f then this negative e to the negative x, well that's got to be f prime, right? I take the derivative of this, I'll end up with a e to the negative x chain rule goes, you know, negative 1 goes down there. Um, and likewise, uh, if I call this y uh, a function g, then implicit differentiation says that, hey, that, that's got to be g prime. So let's go ahead and we'll rewrite the left side as a derivative okay no problem there um, and right here notice how I have the same base exponents are different but same base so algebraically I could just I can just make these one base e I could just add the exponents so that would just give me just 2x e to the x right okay so, let's see here. Um, how about I get another piece of paper? And maybe you're already ahead of the game, but we're just going to integrate. I'll tell you what, I'll just, I'll just draw it right here. We'll, we'll integrate both sides with respect to x. With respect to x, and that is going to, if I integrate a derivative, it just cancels out. And I'm, I'm, I'm writing all this on the next page, just so, uh, okay. So here's the same thing, okay, right there. Uh, all I really did is I just pulled the two out, and it looks like we're going to have to use, ooh, some integration by parts. Okay, no, no big deal, no big deal. We'll do it, we'll take it. So let's see here. Um, I guess technically there's a plus C over here. I guess I should write that because I did integrate that one side. So don't forget about the plus C. So let's see here. I will integrate this. I will let... I have videos on integration by parts just in case you're a little bit uh, rusty on it. There's nothing wrong with being a little rusty on it. So let's see here. So y e to the negative x plus c1 is equal to 
to um, e to the x minus the integral of v du. Okay. And this isn't too bad because, you know, the integral of e to the x is just e to the x plus c. So let's, um, I'm also going to, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to distribute the two and do this integral all at the same time. Actually, no, I'm not. I'm just going to, I'm just going to do it step by step just, be, just, just because. Okay. All right, so let's see here. Um, what am I going to do next? What I'm going to do is I'm going to distribute the 2 now, and um, here's another thing. If you want to, you can distribute the 2 and write 2C2. But, I mean, but it really doesn't matter, and it will come out here. I mean, you can do it if you want, but it'll, it'll come out the exact same. I, I'm going to go ahead and write it. And at the same time, I'm going to subtract C1 from both sides. Okay, so, so 2 times an unknown constant minus an unknown constant is just another unknown constant. Okay? So I'm just going to use the uh, good old plus C. Okay? Um, next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to divide everything by, by e to the negative x. And then my function is all over e to the negative x. Okay. So let's get another piece of paper and let's see if we can't solve our initial value problem now. Okay. I should have this paper ready because I'm running out of time. Hopefully you copied that down. So what was our here here was our problem and our initial value problem was y of zero is equal to three, so 3 is equal to, well, the first term goes to 0. Um, if x goes to 0, e to the x goes to 1, so that's just negative 2. And, well, this is just 1 as well. So we get 3 equals negative 2 plus c. Okay, and we just, uh, you know, algebraically, c is equal to 5. Okay, so our function is y of x is equal to 2x e to the x minus 2e to the x plus 5 divided by e to the negative x. Maybe you don't like to do that. You could always just you could always just put the e upstairs in the numerator without the negative sign. Okay, another thing, I just want to go back here real quick. With as far as these constants go, um, we did find out that let's see here. It, uh, well, if, if if you were to just uh, from the get-go, um, you know, call this an arbitrary constant. You know, you, you w w like when we threw the C, uh, the 2 onto the C2, you could have just named it just another C. Um, I guess all I'm really trying to say is you can treat the Cs just like variables if you want. Um, in the end, you're still going to come out with the exact same thing. Okay, so don't, I wouldn't worry too much about it. Um, but what the, the true, the thing that you need to know is that if you have an unknown constant and, you know, it's kind of like a special variable, I guess, in a way, uh, you know, uh, any, any multiple of a constant, any, you know, operation on a constant with a, with a, you know, another real number is still just some constant. So you can always still write it as a C. Okay. So hopefully I didn't uh, lose you on that one. I guess I got a little carried away in the end, but. Um, I think we all got out with our heads still on, so have a good one.